woman, she really doesn't sweat. That's true. She burns. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't sweat. She doesn't. Okay, well, wait. Your it's my, my turn. Mick Jagger. Well, I don't think it's fair to talk about Mick, since I dated him. Well, okay, but Eve, you know, I, I think that, you know, a ride in a limo doesn't exactly constitute a date. Well, he made a pass. <laughs> go on, go on, okay. pick another. I get all the bad ones. Warren Beatty. Whoa, eck. Warren Beatty? Really? I mean, I would never sleep with that man, that's for sure. Would anybody here? <laughs> See? Well, wait, wait. Has anyone here slept with Warren Beatty? Yeah! <laughs> and that man gets around. Hi. Welcome back. I love talking to stars. Me too. You know, some of the stars in this town are my friends because I live in Hollywood, so does Anne, and they're good friends of ours. Close personal friends. You know, you can learn so much from the stars. <laughs> That's why we want to interview them and talk to them and get what they're interested in and what they want to talk about. Well, maybe a deal. Well, at least a lunch. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, today's guest is someone who's very passionate about a subject she's coming on here to speak about. I truly admire her. Me too. And she is my friend. Well, she happens to be a friend of mine, and, and a very close friend of mine is, is married to her, Dan Aykroyd, who I work with as a writer on Saturday Night Live. Thanks a lot, Ian. Now everybody knows who it is. Please welcome Donna Dixon. Thank you. <laughs> All these Hollywood kisses to yes. make sure we don't have lipstick on our cheeks. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Donna, would you like some cappuccino? Oh, I'd love some. We'll give it to all our guests. Uh, how would you like it? Decaffeinated non-fat milk. Kim, <laughs> cappuccino, decaffeinated non-fat milk. You know, Donna, of course, we have met before with Danny, and, you know, of course, Danny and I go way back, you know, from when he and I were working together. I was working with Danny before you actually knew Danny, and um, I was just wondering, you know, Danny is such a funny person. I'm sure that Danny makes you laugh at home all the time, and I just wondered, you know, from that period, uh, what, what would be your favorite sketch that Danny did on Saturday night? I think the refrigerator repairman sketch. Fabulous. That was oh, my sketch. favorite. You know, with the pencil in the yeah. bath. That's a fabulous. <laughs> I'm so gratified because actually Rosie Schuster and I wrote that sketch, of course, with Danny's help. <gasps> That's wonderful. And <laughs> thank you. And you know, Danny also was a writer, and Danny and I used to work together on the Irwin Mainway character, you know, where he did unsafe Halloween costumes for children. And he had this tie that had birds going on it. And when Danny left the show, he was so beloved that they retired the tie. Yeah. <laughs> why don't we save this discussion for a little later? Let's talk to Donna about why she's here today, because I think what you're going to hear sure. from her is really amazing. <laughs> Certainly. Amazing stuff. She's very passionate. And so, Donna, why are you here today? Waste. <laughs> Environmental waste. That's what go. I'd like to talk about. I mean, in today's society, we have so much garbage. And what's happening is, is these, these trucks are coming in, taking it to landfills, dumping it. Tractors come in, push sand over it. And we're running out of place to bury our garbage. So what are we going to do? There's only two things that we can do is to cut down the garbage by recycling and pre-cycling. For example, mm -hmm. aluminum cans. 65 billion cans are thrown away yearly. Now, pre-cycling is the second thing we can do, which means right. not well, buying things that... Did you want to say something? Well, I just think it's wonderful that you have all these statistics at your fingertips. <laughs> and that, you know, I mean, obviously, you are a parent, I know. So, I mean, you must care about the future of our planet deeply as a parent. And I know that, you know, you and Danny have had a child. and. I just wanted to ask, what kind of a father is Danny? <laughs> I mean, would he, for instance, change a diaper? Absolutely. Diapers that are made out of cloth, which is what we use daily, because why? Plastic is permanent garbage. I mean, look at styrofoam. Styrofoam, the chemicals that they make to, to, to make styrofoam is, is, is destroying our ozone layer. Styrofoam will be here for 500 years. So every time you throw that away, I'm telling you, 50 Donna, years from now... Donna, here's your cappuccino, oh, honey. I'm so happy. Thank well, when you. did you get so interested in waste? 
Well, I'm leading her down a path. I'm coming to the question. Yeah, I there's wasting about... time. I'll, you know. right. Donna, how's your cappuccino? Mm, it's delicious. delicious. Thank oh, you. Good. Well, you know, we actually are an ecologically concerned show because mm -hmm. we take those cappuccino grinds and I give them to my mother and she puts them in her compactor and she uses them on her garden. That's wonderful. You're being you very like conscientious. Okay. Well, I want to just interrupt here to talk about something else as well because I know that you have been spending the last two years, Donna, doing some amazing stuff. I admire you for having taken the time to develop a wonderful marriage, having a baby. I understand you have two great homes that you've been putting a lot of effort into. I also find it amazing that you have time to be ecologically minded and do something about this waste issue. And then I understand that you have been going to school and studying. Can you tell us about that? Well, what I've been doing is I isolated myself for two years. I got pregnant. And I went into a Juilliard type of program, which was two years of not working and working on my craft on a daily basis. I mean, now in about two weeks, I will be considered a classically trained actress. It's amazing. Let's hear it. My family feels the same way. I bet. I know Ooh. what school can do to I'm you. I'm sure Danny does, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sure everybody else here would like to really find out what's next. A vacation. <laughs> That's what's next. Is this where you're leading For <laughs> two years, I have been working without uh, any really rest or solitude. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going away. And all I want to do is read. I want to read a book a week. I want to run on the beach. I want to get lean to the bone. I want to paint. I want to write. I want to see my husband on weekends Stop. because he's working. Stop. Stop killing me. I want your life. You let her. You let her. I let her right into my heart. You want to have my life? Wait. Yes. yes I can I tell do. you how you can have my life. Well, not my life, but a life similar to mine. It's very easy. It is? Absolutely. Oh, please tell me, Donna. Well, I'll tell you, Eve, there's a few guidelines. You don't have to answer. We have the machine on. Okay. Hi, this is Anne. And this is Eve. And we can't come to the phone right now because we're doing our show. So leave a message after you hear the tone. And we'll get back to you right after the taping. We sound good, honey. See you. Yeah, we sound good. Bye. Oh, that's good. Yeah, oh, I like too. Yeah. Maybe it's Vaclav. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Donna, Donna, Donna. Oh, is Elaine your manager? Oh, honey, pick up. Do I have news for you? I, I, Arsenio calls. I have to get Arsenio? this. I'm so sorry. Arsenio. Excuse me. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll just have to wait until Donna comes on the show again to find out how Eve can get her life. I think I know how to get Donna Dixon's life. Really? Yeah. Never miss an opportunity. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> and this is one of my favorite parts of the show. Yes, me too. Me right. Too. And it's where we talk to men, basically, because, you know, we want to understand them better. Yeah, you can never understand a man enough. So true. And so we talk to different men with different things. That's right. For instance, men with eyeglasses. Men with ponytails. Men with car phones. Men with badges. Men with guns. Guns? Well, not big guns. Well, handguns. <laughs> Today, we have men with tool belts. And like right now, here they are, men oh. with tool belts. Hi, hi. Thank you. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice yeah. to see you. No, oh, they're so great. Oh. Really wonderful. A lot of tools. Yeah. And they have their cappuccino. Their cappuccino. How do you like that? Uh, why, why is the milk all fuzzy like that? It's a uh, steamed milk. It's okay, man. It's all right. It's, it's all right. It's better like that. So here you are, and I'd like to welcome you, and I'd like to have you introduce yourself and tell us what you do with your tool belt. Uh, I'm Bill Butler. I'm a carpenter. Michael Spine, uh, install cable, uh, continental cable, Hollywood division. Oh, that's, that's my division. Shaky Van Zant, sculptor, multidimensional abstract. Sculptor? This yeah. is great. Where did you get him? Well, I was at Cafe Java, mm -hmm. and I saw Shaky there. He was wearing his tool belts. So I just went up to him and said, hey. <laughs>